Chemical formulas are ways of representing molecular compounds and even elements. So a molecular formula is a representation of a molecule or compound which consists of the following. Chemical symbols, um, which are the same ones that you'll see on the periodic table. Uh, subscripts after the symbol to indicate the number and each type of atom. So for example, um, I'm sure that you are familiar with the chemical formula H2O. So the chemical symbols are H, hydrogen, and O, oxygen. And the subscript here, the 2, refers to the fact that there are two hydrogen atoms for every one oxygen atom. So if there's not a number written after um, a chemical symbol, in this case the oxygen, then we assume that there's only one of them there. A structural formula shows the same information as a molecular formula, but also shows how the atoms are connected. So here's a couple of examples of uh, structural formulas. So um, uh, representation A is a molecular formula similar to H2O, CH4, indicating that there's one carbon and four hydrogen atoms. Um, representation B is the same compound, but now we see some indication of the bonding. So there are four hydrogen atoms, and they're all stuck to the central carbon atom. Representation C is that same compound, but now the, we're seeing some three-dimensionality here. So compound B, or representation B, is kind of flat, and in C, you can see that the one group kind of pops out, and two of those groups kind of go back a little bit. So this adds some three-dimensionality to uh, the structure here. And in representation D, this is a, probably the most realistic representation, because atoms are spheres, and when atoms bond together uh, to make compounds, it's, um, the bond happens when the spheres overlap. So representation C kind of emphasizes the bond as a stick, and the, the atoms are balls, and the balls are connected by a stick. That's not realistic, because the, the atoms themselves are overlapping in order to form that bond. So in uh, representation D, we can really see those atoms kind of overlapping to form a molecule. So these are all representations of the same molecule, and they all kind of give us um, a little bit different information about what that molecule looks like. So uh, most atoms, most elements, come one at a time. So metals, for example, um, when I have a sample of sodium, all of the sodium atoms are kind of individual. They're all stuck together to make uh, a, a sample of sodium. But the atoms themselves, if I were to write the chemical formula of the metal sodium, I would write Na, and I would indicate that the phase is solid. So in parentheses, I would write solid after it. Or if, uh, if I weren't writing the phase, I would just write Na, just to indicate that that element comes all by itself, one at a time. Some elements come two at a time. So hydrogen, for example, comes as H2. Nitrogen comes as N2. Oxygen comes as O2. F2, Cl2, Br2, I2, and so on. Um, sulfur comes eight at a time. S8 is the most common form of sulfur. Here is uh, Here are a couple of representations of sulfur. So A kind of shows the sulfur, eight sulfur atoms bonded to each other in kind of a ring. Um, but it looks like a flat ring. In representation B, you can see that the ring's not really flat. It kind of has, again, some three-dimensional shapes. It um, looks much less like an, like an octagon when you look at it that way. And in representation C, you can see the spheres actually overlapping each other, which is probably the most realistic representation of all. So sulfur, these are the, this is what sulfur looks like. Uh, pure sulfur comes in these molecules of S8. 
hydrogen um, generally does not come as one H atom. When hydrogen is on Earth, we see it as H2. It comes as a hydrogen molecule. So uh, these are just some, some ways that we would represent different, um, different structures. So we can write the symbol H, and when we do, what we're referring to is one hydrogen atom by itself, even though that's not what it looks like on Earth. We could write 2H to refer to two hydrogen atoms. But when I write H2, I'm showing that those atoms are stuck together. 2H2 is showing that I have two of those molecules that are stuck together like this. Um, an empirical formula uh, indicates the simplest whole number ratio of the number of atoms in the compound. And a molecular formula indicates the actual number of atoms of each element in a compound. So an example is benzene with a molecular formula C6H6, but its empirical formula is CH, which is the simplest ratio, whole number ratio, uh, that can represent that compound. So empirical formulas are um, helpful when we're trying to mathematically calculate what the formula of a compound might be from some uh, data on mass and percentages. Um, sometimes we can get a ratio of atoms um, that the carbon to hydrogen ratio is one to one, but we don't know if, it, if the molecular formula is CH or C2H2 or C3H3. We need more information. So getting, a molecular, getting an empirical formula from uh, from a certain type of um, data set is often easier than getting the molecular formula for which we would need more information. Um, another example, acetic acid. Here the molecular formula has an actual ratio of 2 to 4 to 2. 2 carbons, 4 hydrogens, 2 oxygens. But we can simplify that ratio. If I divide each of those numbers by 2, then I get a ratio of 1 to 2 to 1. 1 carbon to 2 hydrogens to 1 oxygen. So again, the empirical formula is um, uh, helpful when we're trying to uh, determine what the molecular formula is. Sometimes we'll stumble upon the empirical formula first when we're doing the math. Here are some representations of benzene, that's C6H6. So um, a simplified uh, version, sometimes we call this a Lewis structure, is um, represented in uh, representation A. You can see that there's some double bonds between carbon atoms and some single bonds, and it's kind of in a hexagon, in a ring like this, and each carbon atom is bonded to a hydrogen atom. In representation B is the same compound, but again, we call that the ball and stick representation. Um, and compound C, or representation C, is the same compound again, but this is called the space filling model. And remember, this is probably the most realistic because those atoms, the carbon atoms, are bigger than hydrogen, and you can see they're, they're spheres here. And so the spherical carbon atoms are overlapping the spherical hydrogen atoms, and that makes a bond between those atoms, so they kind of stick together. And picture D there is a bottle full of benzene. And benzene is a clear liquid. It kind of smells like gasoline. Uh, vinegar is um, acetic acid and water. So here is a Lewis structure of acetic acid. It's a carbon that has four um, bonds to hydrogen, single bonds to hydrogen. Here's a double bond to oxygen. A single bond to oxygen and then oxygen is another single bond to hydrogen. Here's a ball and stick model of that same compound. So you can tell in the ball and stick model the different atoms have different colors. Here in the Lewis structure different atoms have different letters. The letters referring to the the letters on the periodic table. And in a ball and stick model carbon is black, hydrogen is white, and oxygen is red. So um, the letters disappear when we look at these ball and stick models and the space filling models, and so we have colors to represent the atoms instead. Um, it may be possible for the same atoms to be arranged in different ways, and these are called isomers. Isomers are compounds with the same chemical formula, but they have different molecular structures. So 
um, acetic acid and methyl formate both have the same molecular formula, two carbons, four hydrogens, and two oxygens, but they have different shapes. They're bonded in a different way, so they have different structures and different properties. Here's acetic acid on the left. It has uh, two carbons bonded together. This carbon is bonded to oxygen, two oxygen atoms. Here, the carbon atoms are not bonded together in methyl formate. Um, the carbon atoms are separated by an oxygen. So it looks like what happened is this oxygen atom got moved. It kind of switched places with this C double bond O. They kind of swapped places. So when that happens, this compound is a different compound. It's got a carbon, oxygen, carbon. This has a carbon, carbon, oxygen. So they have different properties. Um, they have different boiling points and they smell differently and uh, they're in this case they're both liquids but sometimes isomers are, don't even have the same phase even though they have the same formula so uh, we can have isomers that differ only in the fact that one of them is left-handed for example we might have a molecule that has mirror images and the simplest way for us to think about mirror images being different is to think about your own hands so your left hand and your right hand are mirror images of each other but they're not actually the same thing even though they're very similar I can't put my right hand into a left-handed glove or sometimes it helps to think about our feet too so your this, the same thing applies to your feet. Your left foot and right foot are mirror images of each other, but you can't put your right foot in your left shoe because they're not the same object. They're different objects. They have different shapes. Uh, they're, they are very similar objects. They're mirror images, but they're different. The same thing happens with molecules. This molecule here is uh, called carvone, and it, sometimes we designate left-handed and right-handed molecules with pluses and minuses. So this is plus carvone, and this one over here is minus carvone. So this one has uh, a smell that's kind of like um, caraway seeds. They're uh, certainly a different smell, uh, uh, kind of hard to describe, but definitely a different smell than, than mint. Um, you're probably more familiar with the smell of mint, but mint and caraway seeds actually have the same exact compound, well, very, very similar, a left-handed and a right-handed version of this compound. And the, just the fact that they differ, their atoms are exactly the same, 10 carbons, 14 hydrogens, and an oxygen, and they even have almost the exact same shape. They're just a left-handed version and a right-handed version, and even those have different chemical properties. So one, they smell completely different to, than each other. So um, uh, isomers are compounds that are very, very similar, but they're still different molecules. Molecules are pretty complicated like this. That if you, it's, it's kind of hard to see this, but these two molecules right here are actually two different molecules that give us two completely different smells. It's really fascinating that the shape of the molecule is really important.